Abyssal plain. The floor of the depths of the ocean. The abyssal plain is found off the continental shelf and slope. This is an underwater plain, flat, or gently sloping smooth area on the ocean floor. Abyssal plains are usually found between 9,800 and 20,000 feet deep. It forms when seafloor spreading creates new crust. The new crust pushes the older crust away, creating a plain-like area in the water. The abyssal plain is formed when the lower crust typically between the foot of a continental rise and a mid-oceanic ridge, melts and pushed up by the upwelling mantle, forms new oceanic crust. This eventually becomes overlain with sediments, mainly clay and silt, producing the flat appearance. Acid, a highly reactive substance. It turns litmus paper red opposite of a base. An acid is a chemical substance. It is sour in taste. Vinegar is an example of an acid. Solutions of acid have a pH of less than 7. A lower pH means a higher acidity. Acids are often used to remove rust and other corrosions from metals. Strong acids, sulfuric acid in particular, are widely used in mineral processing. Acids are used as additives to drinks and foods as they alter their taste and serve as preservatives. Phosphoric acid, for example, is a component of cola drinks. Carbonic acid is, is an important part of some cola drinks and soda. Citric acid is used as a preservative in sauces and pickles. Air mass. This is a large body of air with consistent characteristics throughout the entire body. You may hear a weatherman say cold and dry, cool and moist, hot and moist, etc. Air masses will remain the same temperature and have the same level of moisture unless they combine with another large air mass. When two large air masses of different temperatures or moisture levels combine, a storm can develop. Also, weather conditions can change very quickly when an air mass moves into a new location. Air pressure, the density of air exerting force over an area. Humidity increases the amount of air pressure. This is also called atmospheric pressure. If you go to the top of a mountain, the air pressure will be less than down at the bottom. Sometimes when large masses of air move into an area, air pressure can increase. Asthenosphere. The layer of earth under the crust is the mantle. The outer mantle is comprised of only partially melted rocks and metals. The asthenosphere is solid upper mantle material that is so hot that it behaves plastically and can flow. The lithosphere rides on the asthenosphere. This is the portion of the mantle which the crust rests on. The asthenosphere is about 180 kilometers thick. Asthenosphere is generally solid, although some of its regions could be melted. Seismic waves pass relatively slowly through the asthenosphere compared to the overlying lithospheric mantle. Due to the temperature and pressure conditions in the asthenosphere, rock becomes ductile. The asthenosphere is made up of rock and it contains more iron magnesium than the crust above it. The asthenosphere is a solid, but it can flow like toothpaste. Atoll, a superficial lagoon encircled by a group of islands. An atoll forms in waters that are warm enough to support coral reefs. Some of the features defining an atoll are a fore reef facing the ocean, a back reef facing inwards, a shallow lagoon in the interior, and sand and coral rubber islets on the perimeter. Atolls are most commonly found in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. They can range from 130 kilometers long and 32 kilometers wide. Some atolls are so big that people live on them. An example of this is the Maldives. Axial tilt. This is defined as the angle from the vertical axis from which the planet is tilted. This determines the seasons of Earth. Earth has an axial tilt of 23.5 degrees. The Earth is tilted in the same direction throughout a year. Axial tilt is partially responsible for the seasons. 
During the summer, the sun's rays hit the earth at a steep angle. The light does not spread out as much, thus increasing the amount of energy hitting any given spot. Also, the long daylight hours allow the earth plenty of time to reach warm temperatures. During the winter, the sun's rays hit the earth at a shallow angle. These rays are more spread out, which minimizes the amount of energy that hits any given spot. Also, the long nights and short days prevent the earth from warming up. Thus, we have winter. Cementation, the process by which sediments are stuck together and compressed. Sedimentary rock is formed through cementation. Cementation is a process of deposition of dissolved minerals in the interstices of rocks. Cementation may occur in fissures or other openings of the rocks, and in time, all such spaces will be closed completely. Cementation is where new minerals stick the grains together just to cement binds sand grains in a bricklayer's mortar. If you look carefully at the microscope photo, you can see mineral crystals that have grown around the sediment grains and bonded them together. Let's begin the story about 750 million years ago. At that time, Kentucky was covered by a vast inland sea. Rivers flowing into the sea carried clay, silt, gravel, and fine and coarse grain sands, depositing them on the ocean floor in sandbars, deltas, and beaches. Over millions of years, the weight of the sediment caused the sea floor to sink, and the sea deepened. The layers of sand were covered by finer grain sediment and compressed into thick, hard layers. The pebbles and grains of the sand were cemented together by dissolved minerals in the water. This process created the sedimentary rock known as sandstone. As this process was repeated, layers of hard sandstone alternated with layers of clay and silt. The layers of clay and silt were compressed and cemented into shale and other soft sedimentary rocks, creating a multi-layer deposition thousands of feet thick with alternating layers of hard and soft rock. Continental Shelf the downward sloping part of a continent which surrounds each continent. The continental shelf is an underwater landmass which extends from a continent, resulting in the shallow water area known as shelf sea. The continental shelf is the first layer of the ocean floor that is below sea level. The shelf slopes downward until a point where there is a dramatic drop off and the water becomes much deeper. The average width of continental shelves is about 80 kilometers or 50 miles. The largest shelf, the Siberian Shelf in the Arctic Ocean, stretches to 1,500 kilometers or 930 miles in width. The continental shelves are covered by terrigenous sediments, that is, those derived from erosion of the continents. Which gas is the most in the atmosphere? Carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon monoxide. Marvelous! Nitrogen. The Earth's axis explains how the Earth tilts toward or away from the blank. The planets, moon, sun, the center of the Earth. You did it! Sun. What process do barrier islands keep from happening somewhat? Erosion, deposits, snow, sand. Excellent! Erosion. Bedrock is located underneath the blank. Atmosphere. Mantle, core, topsoil. Perfect. Topsoil. What is high on the side of a valley? A cliff, a river, a mountaintop, an ocean. Excellent. A cliff.